Right, so tournament underway. We're going to start with the Budox and Dan Carter on the Blues match. So let's go. Let's have these normal creations come to life. Come to life. Who who you think's going to win in chat, guys? Out of all the competitors. After the first round, we'll get your predictions. Set and pass. So we've got the Usartic engine. We've got Megatanus from Budox. Sending it away. And we've got a decent boss monster on the field at 2400 attack. And we've got the face down in defense. So obviously going into the battle phase now. What does Dan Carter have face down? He is playing Metal Foes. Gonna head to bed though. It's almost 2 AMP. Nice man, you definitely stick around. Yeah, definitely dark. Um, love to have you part of the stream. How's things are, Demi? Great to have you here too. Joel, GG was me smile. Welcome guys in. Um, you guys are just watching the first round of the normal card challenge. Love that emote from Dull Logs. That's such an awesome, cool Armakiza um, emote. How do I always come up with the coolest tournament ideas? I sort of brainstorm them. We have a bit of trial and error too, GG. We've almost got the right formula now for every um, part of the week now. Just fill with um, really cool tournaments. I, I, I like the one with the heart the most, but they're all equally as good. So Dan Carter responds with a good Metal Foe play here in Vol Flame. And he's got a wee spell set up, Metal Morphation, which gives his Metal Foes a little bit of a boost in attack. So the response from Budok will be super, super important. But yeah, I'm GG and uh, Demi. Um, great to see you guys here. Uh, we've got another tournament tomorrow, which is three of a kind. So pretty much with three of a kind... As mentioned, if you're playing a card, you must play it at three. So that's the golden rule for tomorrow's tournament. So enemy controller grabbing the Vol Flame, getting a decent attack off, and very, very nicely done from uh, Budox. So you're going to do something with the Vol Flame. Yeah, no limit with semi-limits allowed. Yeah, yeah every deck card is next still idea. Card gains and motorcycles. Yeah, so the minimum is a 42 card deck. That's correct, yes. So I've got the Dragon Pulse Magician. 3 Max C, 3 Ash. That takes up a bit of your slots at the moment. <laughs> you made a deck for 42 cards. What about the extra deck? So your extra deck has to be a minimum of 3 cards. So your extra deck, if you're playing, say, say 1000 Dragon, for example, has to be run at 3. So I've got the Pit and the Pulse. Metal Foe is looking quite good and handy at the moment. Uh, we've got a few decent attacks on Budox. Ten card are looking quite strong in this uh, normal card um, opener. So if you don't own 3 nib, you can't play it at all. Tough luck. Yeah. Uh, but like some people are going to run into some very interesting decisions. Controller, so Budox is hanging in there. 
He's going to have to flip that into defensive mode. He ran into a very interesting decision. Right, you know, looks like Dan's in control of this. The Nisoda decision so I can made an ult with a new deck. <laughs> Your sense of humor is top notch, uh, Suzaki. I have to give you that, man. Top notch um, and brilliant. Got the uh, got the uh, gold driver, and we got the vol flame. It is best of three storm of summit, so loser gets to pick if they lost in match one, first or second. So Dan Carter has the Lictar taken on, say squeezed. Very interesting card, Lord of the Heavenly Prison. Pendulums always seem so good in these low power meters. So we've got Malfies from our uh, Lictar being played. We've got the Caddy and the Fenny. And the Say Squeeze brings out his big Toon Goblin attack force and of course cannot attack the first turn. Okay, we've got the Rabby and we're going into the R Ronin Raccoon. Which is a normal card. So he's got a wee bit of a strategy going on too. Wee bit of a token build up with the first Monarch being activated in response. Decent defense. See Koala added to the hand now. See Koala will be able to churn out some cards here. Main phase two. Face down. Malfi Caddy's going to activate. Lictar got a decent strategy going here. Bit of a level two strat going on. But yeah, um, Shizaki, your opponent um, for the round five. Opponent for round five. I'm just going to find out for you. You've probably already seen it in the Discord anyway. So your opponent is Hendo. Interesting first match between these two. Like, that's sort of the pace is slowing down a wee bit. And can, what can Lictar do to sort of break open that um, board here? So, we've got Malfi Finney. Level 2 is going to put in a wee bit of work here just to get uh, Lictar onto a dominant board. Got the Malfi Playhouse uh, being activated. Don't even know what Malfi Playhouse does. Yo, Anderson, how's things going, my man? How's your ass at Jude's going? Oh, by the way, great to see you here, friend. You're here for the normal deck tournament, Anderson. Uh, this is where um, cards from the common card slot are being played. But if you guys are not following Anderson, last was playing some Brack Baker. And um, Anderson's raising money for St. Jude, so it's a very worthy cause. Definitely go and follow my friend Anderson and help him out. But um, lovely to see you, Anderson, as always. Very good um, friend, as always. So we've got the two Rona Macoons attacking. That's good to hear. Like, uh, I'm really wrapped your fundraiser's going well this year, man. Like, um, all the hard work's paying off. He's writing, raising money for St. Jude's uh, Children's Hospital. So he will tell you a little bit more about it. Couple of face downs. Yeah, so Anderson raises money for it every year, Shizaki. Like, it's around this time that. And, um, yeah, def definitely check out the stream. Um, Anderson has played a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh! before. Shizaki played some old school sort of stuff. Um, mainly a variety streamer, though. Um, plays Yu-Gi-Oh! Probably, probably once or twice a year, don't you, Anderson? You sort of bust it out and sort of play it for a session or two. And, um, well known for his Madden, um, American football, um, streams. 
So we've got the Malfi Playhouse. That's going to return back. Liktar are playing a pretty good duel at the moment. Just Ronan and Raccoon strategy looking alright uh, so far. Looks like these car these guys are very easy to summon. Just the key if he has any power-ups for them would make them um, even better. We've got the uh, Sea Koala now. Making its way to the field. Into the battle phase now. That's going to be a decent amount of damage. So you squeeze um, getting... Um, into a really rough position. So we've got the big march of the animals. So we're going for a bit of extra attack. And the first monarch will be ever reliable here for say squeeze and sort of help with the defensive play up. So big march of the animals is not going to matter. Funny thing was if that attack had gone through, a hundred life point squeeze would have had. But very happy with that. And we've got super rush recklessy. Super rush recklessy is going to increase. Destroy the shuffle, so 1600, 1600. But yeah, um, of course guys, this tournament is on a rotation. So effectively, next week is the rare card tournament. You can't play any normal, super rare, and ultra rare cards. It's going to rotate every week, a different rarity play. Just test your building skills other um, ways. Uh, and of course, um, I've come up with another one. So it's going to be called the mixture after all the rarity. So you had to play 10 normals, 10 super rares. Uh, no, sorry, 10 normals, 10 rares, 10 super rares, and 10 ultra rares after we've had the ultra rare tournament. And the extra deck has to be made up of at least 3 of each rarity and to be able to play the event. So that'll be coming up um, in 3 or 4 weeks' time. So we've got the Malfi tag. What if you want to play 60 cards? If you, if you play 60 cards, Shizaki, um, for... What, what, what um, tournament are you going to... Uh, if you want to play 60 cards, you play 15 of each. So I'm just giving you a guideline of how it works. Yeah, 15 cards of each. 15 normals, 15 rears, 15 super rears, and 15 ultra rears. If you're playing 30, you are 10 of the other. Uh, I, I, I will alter that rule and say you had to play a fair mixture of them all if you play a 60 card deck. It'd be pretty hard playing a 30 UR deck though. So squeeze just hanging in there, just it's making it very difficult for Liktar to sort of finish it off. This could be a long, long duel. And of course this is only match number one between these two. Got a pony and a cat on the field. Um, can they go into another two star? They cannot. Look, Tar's going to take the face down and keep applying the pressure. Have you still been doing that speed run offline, Matt? Yeah, it's still, still doing it, and since still trying to work hard on it. Uh, the, th the problem I have is like the world record's really good, and it will take me a bit of time to complete. Like the speed running aspect will probably take a bit of a backseat over the next wee while as we sort of grow with Master Duel. Um, obviously, it's been a big growth um, pattern I've had with this game. I want to continue that. But yeah, the next speedrun game I'll probably do online and since Digimon Survive. Uh, that's a game I really want to run. Game I've been waiting for a long time. It's actually not too far away from being released. So it's definitely going to be putting in the errors for that. And um, hopefully... Um, hopefully get another world record in Digimon and add to our prestigious history of that game. 
Obviously, we'll play the game through, work out all the strategy, and go from there. Another defensive card here. Squeeze has got five cards face down now, so that's making life really difficult for Lictar. So this this is going to be a very very long normal duel. I think this is a sort of a matchup where both players have got sort of strategies that sort of cancel each other out a wee bit. Who's going to force the issue here? Be interesting to see how the other matches are going, guys. Um, I'll be playing everyone's replay of course. Which one survive? And why am I drawing a blank on what that is? It's a new one. So, um, pretty much Anderson, to sum it up, Digimon Survive was meant to come out 2020, but got delayed during the pandemic. And then they delayed it a wee bit more, but they're finally releasing it. But it will be a good game. It's, it's sort of combined strategies of multi-different um, games. So, it'll be quite interesting to see how it turns out. And Digimon do release quite good at, um, releases, so Tree Otter. We gotta have been able to attack the face down. Potentially, no, that's gonna be negate attack, classic uh, card, but very effective. Both opponents have um, full extra decks effectively. Two cards have been played. So, Squeeze has got a 14 card extra deck to Liktar's 8. Frost Monarch being activated, another um, solid defensive piece up, say squeeze. <laughs> so we're now we're going into turn 14 and into 11 minutes into the uh, dueling action. Uh, the caddy is going to activate its effect, the pony is going to activate its effect as well. I think uh, Squeeze has scrambled well to get some resources on the field here. It's just the little light points that are there. It's another first mana uh, for Squeeze at the end of the turn. So there's going to be another card on the field with um, 1,000 attack, 2,400 defense. But yeah, I, I think it'll be pretty cool to play. Um, obviously, it'll be a game I stream. Yeah, this battle rages on to the uh, 14th turn. It's going to be a long one. Reminder that Megalith is best deck. I appreciate my daily reminder, uh, Pyro. Um, you're just watching the normal card challenge at the moment. So we've got um, basically a beast deck taking on a very defensive deck from, say, Squeeze uh, at the moment. It's just whether or not they can break the board open. So we've got a crash work maybe uh, happening here. Sort of get, uh, say, squeeze completely into this contest. Wish there was a remake of Digimon World 3, one of your favourite games on PS1. I would love it, Anderson, if they sort of remastered them and, like, even put them on PlayStation 4, like, as a, like a big set. They need to do that for a lot of classic games. So we have the Space Insulator now. So Space Insulator is going to, um, be another normal, uh, link. Uh, card. So we do have the unknown Synchron now. So I'm guessing uh, Dan has advanced in that um, side of the drawer. So we'll get Dan down as um, into the next round. We take on the winner of Smoky Moon Man and uh, Street on that side of the drawer.
It's anyone's tournament, to be honest, guys. Um, the event, to say the least. Space and Chile is going to do a bit of crashing, and we may have just opened the board up for Squeeze. Can't be destroyed in battle. Rona Raccoon, um, Sendayu. Before you control another beast type monster, this card cannot be destroyed by battle. What card effects? A wee bit of a miscalculation from Squeeze. Could be a very costly thing. 1 2 0, by the way, Street. Um, we will be watching one of you guys' replays very shortly. Smoky Moon Man, thank you so much for taking part. Hopefully, you got a few combos off. We look forward to seeing that uh, very, very shortly. So, Street, um, you're on one side of the draw, taking on Dan Carter and the Blues in semi final there. Um, we're just waiting for the other matches to play out at the moment. You're watching Kit Boga video where he pretends to be a grandma. <laughs> I knew you'd like that guy, uh, Red Beard. Um, pretty much it's right up your alley. He's got some good ones. Very good ones. He, he pretends to be Edna quite a bit, I think. So he's going into the crash for Brian McCoon Sandaru. It's a big march of the animals being activated. A little bit of a boost. And that is game. Liktar takes game number one in that series. Dot in this match here. We haven't seen this match yet. See what these guys are playing in the event for everyone, uh, by the way. Yeah, that, that's a good thing those old school games did have Anderson. Like, Digimon World 3 is a game I'll eventually play uh, as well. I've just got to find time for it. Like, Marcel's taking a big chunk of my time at the moment. I really want to keep growing here. Fluffles for Storm. Fluffle Bear. Good old Fluffle Bear at the end. Toy Vendor is an end as well. So, a wee bit of a Fluffle engine sending wings away. Got the Infernoid strategy with the Fluffles going on here. Now, this is interesting. So, Fluffle Bear will be drawn into the hand. Danger Mothman. So, this is a great mix. We'd love to see you play Digimon World 3. If I was to play it, Anderson, it would be Speedrun. Um, a ball for me. Get such in the mouse and the guy gets... <laughs> Chupacabra. I'm um, here for Storm of Summit. Sending away the... Um, Ogo Bogo and Dogman going away as well. So we've got a decent attacker here. Dot needs a response here. And we've got the Paleozoic uh, that will take out the trap here, which is taking out Danger Response Team. So Dot is playing some Ignites. So we've got a couple of Pendulum decks going. You would join with DDD Fluff if you got to join. We will have this tournament probably next month again sometime prior. Of course, the next week's um, challenge is the rare card challenge, which limits you to the rare card pull only. So it'll be interesting to see what guys come up with here. Your favourite part is where he pretends to pray on the phone. I like it when he starts redeeming the gift cards. And the <laughs> Obviously, you've got that uh, redemption red bear that you play all the time. That's what he does all the time to the um, scammers. When he goes to the uh, shop to get gift cards. Sakawitsu armor, old school, but very effective. So I've got the uh, Void Seeker as well, very nicely done. Unaffected by card effects. What's, what's in my Discord, Red Beard? I don't really check my Discord uh, during the day when I'm at work. It's just I'm far too busy. What do you see in the Discord? I can't see at the moment. Ah, you got you got the uh, D DPE, didn't you? So I got semesters. Uh, yeah, this, this Inferno deck's pretty fire as well from our Storm. 
It's a good battle between these two going on at the moment. The Ignite's being forced into the defensive position. And the battle rage is on here. Toy Vendor sort of aiding the uh, engine a wee bit. Void Seer. Void Seer is going to get sent away. Fluffle Wings will activate. Great wee matchup going on at the moment. Fluffle Bear piles up into the hand. This is this is a great deck that's getting a lot of resources out. So we've got the face down for Toy Vendor. Toy Vendor's going to activate. Toy Vendor's going to go again, sending away the Infernoid. Grabbing the um, card there. This is this is clever. Um, Danger there, returning back. Getting Ogre Pogo to go. Sending Danger Response Team away. Two 2600s and a bottomless trap hole to boot. Semesters is going to send that away. Get rid of that. Bottomless won't be effective. It's banished as well. Just makes it very difficult for Dot. But yeah, I'm guessing you watch a bit of Kit Bogey yourself for Exmo. I know I've converted Red Bear to watching him. Danger Mothman. Danger Mothman's gonna send away. This this deck's this deck's really, really cool. I, I I'm liking this from Storm of Summer. This is this is definitely one of the more interesting decks that I've seen for um, a challenge like this. The resource gaining is insane. It's a wee it's a wee bit um later there. Uh 24 and 26. Who will win the inaugural normal car challenge? Um, so we've got the Ignite. And we've got another Ignite here. So that's going to destroy itself. We're going to grab the Infirm Noble Knights. Yeah, back in the day, you wanted to learn how to hack and code. And Dot will surrender. Um, by the way, Smoky Moon Man. So we're going to play the replay. Quickly get this one done. But yeah, Dot, you come up against a really good deck today. That Danger and Furnoid deck's insanely good for a normal card festival. Yo, J Dragon, how's things going, my man? Welcome into the uh, stream. Just in time for the normal card challenge uh, today that's been played. So streets running um, sort of a classic um, spaceship sort of deck. So we've got the elemental heroes in action on the other side. Danger Infernoid Fluffle. That's the name of the deck, I'll call it. It works really well, J Dragon. You're going to be pretty much amazed when you see it in the semi finals. Been a very good player in. Um, uh, Dot Dot played a very very beautiful Ignite deck, so it was a great matchup um, between the two before. Melvin Sin, classic hero build there. Uh, let's go for the Lord British Space Fighter, and the Sin's going to attack here as well. But yeah, good old Gradius, say. Eh? Uh, Living a spark. Oh, that could have been sort of banished there. That could have been game. So 3,000 points for the Ars Malibin Sin now. We know Trap Hole's face down, but it's not going to matter now. Like, it's just a matter of destroying the wee bit. And there we go, Street's uh, deck. Right, let's go. Dan is running a Pendulum deck. Street is running his spaceship sort of old-school Gradius uh, build. But J Dragon, you have to see this danger and for annoyed um, fluffle deck. It's it's beautiful. Poetry in motion. Uh, the deck. From what I can see. Some legit token collected, yeah. When you're playing Sword Soul, dang. How is your Sword Soul deck coming along here? Yeah, um, like like said Street, you come up with some really cool creations, my friend, and that's another good one. You need the play-by-play. -play. You will get to see it, uh, J Dragon, once um, that match starts. The ability to um, 
watching the road right now. I'll, I'll give you the play-by-play -play once we get into it. But just picture a deck just constantly sending cards to the graveyard and constantly re re um, getting resources um, and like giving the Infernoids a chance to so we go from there. So we've got Gradius on the field. Dan Carter started off reasonably slow. Luminous Spark on the field for Gradius. 1700 attacker on the board. And we've got the Paleozoic. Um, that will destroy one of the spells in the back row. And we've taken out the Metal Fire's counter. I found it quite interesting. Uh, Storm was quite good. Um, spending two minutes recycling resources just to end like Mothman and Pass. And... But you got a few like Infernoid as... Uh, System is out, um, which were pretty good, considering. So it's a very good defense of Metal Fire Steel in there for Dan Carter and the Blues. Dan is a regular uh, semi-finalist here, and he's looking to build with his Metal Fire's plays. He's got the Metal Fire Ignite deck going on, Ignite Templar on the field. Decent card. Uh, he's going to crash into the um, Gradius. Just imagine Deep Draw Danger Dark World, but cooler. Okay, there's Ox coming back on the board as well for Street. But yeah, an all normal card challenge is seeing some pretty interesting play at the moment. But of course, guys, if you're up to the challenge, if you're new to the stream and want to take part in these fascinating events, Love to see you take um, the challenge. And um, we do have a Discord. These events are placed in there for people that are interested in that. So we've got the Sakurutsu armor taking care of Mr. Gradius. Or Gradius. But the key for this um, little street deck is it's got a little Paleozoic engine. So we've got... Um, Paleozoic Canadia um, back on the field. And the main phase, we'll see Dan Carter with two uh, defensive monsters looking to build with his Ignite Metal Fire build. So we've got Pendulums Galore in this event. Don't even made any nice sorts of deck for a big copium. Just note it's just normal cards, Pyro. There's no rare cards in this event. So we've got the Shinobi Insect uh, uh, Gaku uh, well, Hakuri Mino. Uh, sorry. I'm making it the field. And another news today, guys. My starter deck, um, Pegasus, finally arrived. We've got Joey and Pegasus here now. Um, we'll be trying to get the starter deck Yugi and Kyber at the right time. Um, obviously need to save up a bit of money. I want to get a lot of the old school sort of stuff all wrapped up. So I've at least opened up a box of everything. Like, Magician's Force is something I'm ultimately saving up for now over the next couple of months. To get a booster box of it. It's going to cost me around 6000 New Zealand dollars, but I'm, I'm going to get it. Because um, I want to be able to collect everything. want to be the ultimate collector in terms of our stuff. It's how much I love the game, really. It's just my hobby. Uh, and just gonna get it before it gets too expensive. Same with like some of the other boxes, like ultimately uh, there. Oh, it is. It definitely is. I'm, I'm trying to get it now before it just gets out of my price range. What's my most expensive card? Oh, that's a good question. I do have a few first edition cards that are quite valuable. I have a first edition Jinzo that's from Pharaoh's uh, Servant. That'll be right up there. I have a Gate Guardian first edition from... Uh, the, um, I think it was Magic Ruler or Metal Raiders, can't remember now. You have the Magician's Four Star Magician Girl. Be worth quite a bit, uh, Jay Dragon, if it's in reasonable condition. I think we've had a discussion about this, um, before. I think, um, that's a very hard, very hard card to, um, get. Sort of, a, it's sort of a card I want to get, like, just as a PSA graded 10, first edition. It's just slowly getting out of my price range as well. That, that card's going to astronomically go up. So at the moment, we've got Dan Carter swinging the match into his control. Um, the Metal Foe um, Ignite deck starting to take um, control. So 
So we've got Flint um, on the field. Um, are we going to see Streak play the Flint lock on this? Let's see. Turn 11. Oh, oh, that Magician's Full Start Magician Girl. I'm so jealous. <laughs> it's a card I'm really arming at the moment. You have a fake red eyes with a 24,000 um, attack. Your most expensive card's the Pokemon one. Some of the Pokemon cards have gone to astronomical levels, but they have. Some of the cards have dropped in value a wee bit just because of the hype um, has sort of dropped down a wee bit. But yeah, as people are saying, some of the old school stuff's just getting insanely hard to find. And of course, people are just selling it for exorbitant prices. Oh, that's a wee bit of a nice wee play with Bottomless Trap Hole. Getting rid of a stronger um, Metal Foe card there. It's been banished. Metal Foe is well Flame. Dan Carter's got um, Street down to 2,900 points. You saw the biggest scam ever on Facebook. Someone selling a near mint first edition base set Charizard for $500. Oh, we got Flintlock with Gravity Blaster on the field. Okay, that's going to be permanent boost every turn. Street turning it round here with his old uh, spaceship build. They said they were too lazy to get it graded, so in other words, it's fake. The only person I really know that's got a first edition Charizard, and I think it's Redbeard, actually. Um... But his, his one sort of graded one or two if it was to be sent away. Because he has sent me pictures of it. GG's to uh, Say Squeeze. Who won that dual Say Squeeze, uh, by the way? Um, you'll be playing um, Storm of Summit if you did win that. So we've got the Flintlock going up to 2800 attack now. The tide is turning. And we've got Paleozoic Kennedy flipping down the Flintlock and more importantly getting rid of the Gravity Blaster. Lictar won it. Okay, so was that 2 1? Or is it 1 all guys playing off of the third duel there? So, Lictar, um, you are playing in the semi finals, if, if that's the case. You are playing Storm of Su Storm of Summer. So, get your guys' match started immediately, and we'll continue on this uh, normal um, card challenge. So turn 16, another real epic struggle being taken on here. As Dan Carter's got the Ignite Templar on the field, he's managed to get rid of the Flintlock. Street's on 2,900 life points, Dan Carter's on 5,300. And we've got the big um, Felchy on, um, on the field with 1,700. And Iron is being played. Okay, so Iron is going to get the Flint uh, Lock out. Flint Lock at 2,000 attack. Obviously with the Lumen Spark giving these cards a little bit of a boost. And we've got another 1700 taken here for Street. So this match on um, semi-final number two, effectively match number one, is uh, in the favour of Street at the moment. And we're going for a extra deck card. And we're going into the Malevent Sin. Of course, Malevent Sin is a normal card in this game. So turn 18. So I think it's Streets game game number one. And Dan Carter will have to choose whether they're going first or second. By the looks, if Streets got another card. No, he doesn't. So Dan's got another turn. Down to 900 points. Melvin Sun's going to get a little bit stronger at 2700. Imposing um, card on the board. Turn 19 now. It's gone 10 minutes. So it's been very action-packed for 10 minutes. But yeah, if you guys collect in real life, guys, any treasured cards you have in your collection, feel free to share. In the chat, it's always, it's always awesome to share. And Dan Carter has surrendered that first duel. So he picked that a lot of people are intrigued about Storms. Uh, so Storms playing a Danger Infernoid Fluffle build that um, just managed to keep getting resources. So we'll talk everyone through the plays, especially with people that are just watching in the background. 
So Lictar we're going first. Malfi Pony being played. Reload's gonna be happening. And only the pony on the field. So Stormer Summit will be looking to go strong. So we've got Fluffle Bear sending itself away for the toy vendor. So the toy vendor is gonna activate now. Sending away the um Infernoid Semesters. And we've got the Pro. Primalis, uh, and we've got another Infernoid being sent away. Um, we've got the Ogre Pogo out, another Toy Vendor. Sending away Danger Response Team. And that, and another Infernoid being sent away. This is crazy stuff already. You got the Secret Rare Yadagratsu. Yo, that'd be like a Holy Grail of the collection. Most expensive card you in real life is DP, nothing special. Still a pretty cool card, although it's smoky. So what are we going to see from the Infernoid package? So we've got a few banishes to banish. And we've got the 2600 um, Sesimas uh, onto the field. 7 star monster, 2600 attack, 0 defense. Very easily um, got on the field with the strategy. So the Toy Vendor is sending away the Infernoids. Um, and pretty much the dangers are discarding themselves as well to get sort of strong resources out. And the strategies enabled to play, um, obviously the Infernoid package. It's really, really creative. So the Danger Ogre Pogo. Gonna attack. Try my luck with two displays of Ghost from the past two, but no luck, sadly. Get anything from it, Smokey? I've yet to get my one in the box, actually. Like, I've, I've got a case of it coming. Um, so I've put a bit of money into that one. So we've got the Semester sort of sending itself away. And the Super Rush Recklessy is going to um, not be too effective here. Both cards destroyed. The Ogre Pogo is going to go for the attack. Main phase two. Have we got enough Infernoid in there? So we've got Lictar. Still well in the contest, Lictar. Three cards in the hand. Obviously played very well with the Malfis to get through the uh, semi-finals. So I've got Malfi tag now. So out of the um, competitors that we've got left, guys, um, Budox is the only one that's won a championship. Of course, he won his first event yesterday with winning the Highlander uh, tournament. Borrow in was the only thing you pulled worth. I was shooting for the Dark Magician Girl with the Louvres. I'd love to pull a Ghost Rare from that set. But I don't think I will. I don't think I've got the luck. The last real luck I had was getting the Ghost Rare Wing Dragon of Ra from uh, the Legendary set. So Toy Vendor activating the first one. Fluffle Wings going away. Got the Infernoid being sent away from the draw from Toy Vendor. So there's two Infernoids in there now. So this is the key. Like Toy Vendor's drawing Infernoids, sending them to the graveyard and benefiting the graveyard here. Fluffle Bear being discarded. And we've got another card in hand. Vendor's being sent away. Vendor's going to activate the effect from the graveyard now. Got Red Dragon Archfiend where your girlfriend pulled it. That's pretty cool though. Red Dragon Archfiend's a pretty cool one from the collection. Fluffle Bear now. Fluffle Bear's going to activate. Sending itself away. Toy Vendor number three on the field now. If you're the case, you probably pull two Ghost Rares. Yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping I get at least one. So I've got the Ogre Pogo in hand. Ogre Pogo being sent away through the Toy Vendor effect. Ogre Pogo is going to make itself known on the board. And Mothman's going to activate as well. Could be a few discards from that play. So a draw for um, Lictar, but a draw for Stormar Summit as well. So another discard of the Danger Chupacabra. And Big March of the Animals will go. You want to build an ice barrier deck how competitive is it it's sort of a dual room deck um budox in terms of competitiveness it probably get crushed online it was a good deck back in the day but it's just been majorly power creep now and we've got the danger dog man uh making its way to the field now and do we have an infernoid play coming from the graveyard as well toy vendor it's going to activate its effects uh toy vendor is going to Send away another Infernoid to the graveyard, drawing into Dan Danger Dog Man. 
Dogman being discarded as well from the Toy Vendor effect. Reducing Pony to zero attack. This is this is insane. Insanely good deck. Um, so Soma Summit is going to be doing some extra deck summoning here. He's going to go into the um, the pin uh, test tag. So at 1600 attack and a bit of piercing. We've got a lot of resources in that graveyard. We're going to definitely see an Infernoid um, from the graveyard now. Got four cards that are banished at the moment. A couple of Infernoids and Fluffle Wings and Beer. That's sort of not there anymore. So we've got the um, seven star and furanoid back on the field instead of a wee bit of banishing again. Send it, bouncing back a card. So we've got um, the infernoid um, Sesimas um, attacking, uh, and we've got um, the link monster attacking as well. So Liktar down to twenty six hundred points. Uh, Stormo Summit looking very dominant in this event. Playing beautifully in this event. Lactar, what's the response? Lactar's got Malfies that could sort of combo off. Get maybe something decent on the board, maybe put up a bit of a resistance. Got a defensive play here as well. What guys would you want to want to watch? You want to watch Stormer Summit Lictar game two? Would you want to watch the uh, Street versus Dan Carter in the Blues game? Again, Malfi Pony, because we've seen both. Um, both semi-finals now. Couple defensive plays, but the key to note is the Link Monster can do some piercing. So Toy Vendor's gonna go off again, sending away the Chupacabra. Grabbing the Infernoid into hand. The Infernoid being obviously sent away. Chupacabra is going to activate. This is this is this is awesome to see in a normal card event. Like I'm, I'm so impressed by what people have made today. Like the Malfi deck was pretty cool from Liktar. We've had a bit of heroes. We've had a couple of Pendulum decks, uh, and it's just a pretty open field of who's going to win. But. Um, this is going to be a crazy amount of damage. 2600 and Stormo Summit will take that game against. So it's three of a kind. So you got every card you play is must be run at three. We've got hopefully you got an easy week ahead. I do. I'm um, actually Dark Shadow up. I've got a couple of short days this week, and then I'm on annual leave for um, nine days. So that's going to be really, really good to get some things done. Exactly, and that's what I want people to come into our storm is like um, playing some different decks and not having to face Sword Soul, Despair all the time with DPE. Your bet's on Street VX Mo. Um, okay, so see if that prediction does happen. So Storm of Summit getting the Fluffle Bear in that graveyard early, Toy Vendor on the field, and here comes the combos. Yep, it has to be a 42 card deck for our three of a kind. Obviously, you have to play everything at three. Got a decent um, Infernoid. Um, we've got the level one. Taking a set card, returning it back to the deck. British Space Fighter on the field. Not um, bad from Street. So Stormo Summit um, is in a pretty interesting spot. So he's going to special summon another token here as Street. Getting, obviously, the Lord British Space Fighter to destroy something. Yeah, I'm good. I'm mute. Um, how are you today? It, it is, yes. Uh, so the minimum extra deck has to be run at three. We have to get you part of our events in Zektron. Um, at some point. Like, these tournaments are really fun. So, ah, uh, Fluffle Bear. Another Toy Vendor. The second one. So it's 
going to be a couple of discards going on for a turn. Let's have a look at the Chupacabra. So that's sending away the spell. Got Chupacabra at 1,500 points. For Infernoids being banished, and we've got the 2200s. That's going to be Bottomless Trapfold. Voice clashes with your rogue schedule, probably on holiday if I'm lucky. And the Void Seer is going to stop the um, Bottomless. Obviously, that was in the graveyard. Very nicely done. Toy Vendor is going to discard the uh, Ogre Pogo. And we're drawing into the uh, Toy Vendor, and Toy Vendor will discard. Toy Vendor will activate from the graveyard. Yeah, I think we'll see a surprise appearance from me at some point in Zetron. Hopefully I can sort of stream at a time where you're on and then you can sort of take part. I always lo used to love dueling in uh, Duel Links. Fluffle Wings being um, drawn into the hand. Toy Vendor is going to activate the second one. Wings is going away. And we're drawing into an Infranoid. Infranoid sent away the Pet Rulia. Yo, Stoner God, 4202. I am good, my friend. How are you, Stoner, uh, today? So, in three of a kind, everyone has to have a 42 card deck. Yes, uh, that's right, Lictar. That is exactly right. So we're into the battle phase. I think the space uh, fighter is going to get targeted here. Yet yeah, for 2200. What's the face down from street? We've got the Paleozoic Kennedy air flipping down the Infranoid. And the Void uh, Seer has been activated to sort of mean the Infranoid does not get affected by the Paleozoic. So business as usual here. The space fighter going to be losing a thousand. The Infranoid um, Piety um, discards the other one. But how's things been, uh, Stoner God? It's great to have you in our stream. What are you playing in Master at the moment? Um, hopefully, our uh, Fusion Festival's going well too. Have people completed the Fusion Festival yet, guys? Have people managed to get the 22,000 points uh, for that? Uh, so we've got the Shinobi Knights. You would think you'd break a lot with 60 cards, but I've been proven wrong. I think what helps 60 card decks is the ability to play that uh, Grass Looks Greener. And we've got Berserker of the Tenai uh, from Stormer Summit. This deck continues to spring up surprises. Very nice uh, three. Uh, Link Monster 3000 attack. Streets has been on the defensive quite a bit here, and um, the attacks keep coming relentlessly from Stormer Summit. So we've got a banish. So the Infernoid is going to get the one star Infernoid out, and the set card is going to be shuffled to the deck. So that's a 3000 open attack uh, here now. got to say the most broken part of this deck is the Infernoids. Yeah, just the ability with Toy Vendor sending away the Infernoids and the um, Danger is just making it just incredibly good. So Fluffle Bear and the Infernoid back on the field. Any ideas of what punks would work in Virtual World? Ooh, I wouldn't know enough I Stone of God to be honest. Uh, just because I haven't played any of the two. So the first game looks like it's going the way of Stormer Summer. So Berserk of the Tenai attacking for 3,000. The Infranoid will attack for 2,200. And the Pen Test Targ is attacking for 1,600. And that's a, quite a commanding game. 
So Stormer Summit um, is one win away from winning the tournament. So the dangers are going to work here. Mothman getting itself on the field. We've sent away the danger dog, man. And we've got a, um, just a face down and a defensive play here. If Street's going to win this. He has to be super aggressive. He has to get a good hand um, going second. And we've got the uh, Flintlock um, on field now. And we've got the Luminous Spark giving it a little bit of increase to 500 points. And Gravity Blaster on the Flintlock. Okay, so Gravity Blaster is going to get that Flint up to 2400. You're bad at building decks, but you build a decent ploys and a decent Dark Magician deck. Yo, that's pretty cool, man. Like, old school sort of cards. Um, like, what's your favourite of the two? I think I like the Dark Magician one slightly more. But they're both sort of fun, nostalgia sort of builds. Any Ginzo deck users? I didn't believe someone did build a Ginzo deck and send it to me. Who's the man? Yo, no cap gang Dre. Yo, welcome to the community, my friend. Thank you so much for the follow there. So we've got the one star Infernoid attack, um, targeting the face down. Yeah, rit Ritual, uh, Blois do have a few variations. I've got the Ritual, um, and the Synchro version. And we've got Gradius on the field. Can Street Strike back here? Wouldn't it be great to see it go to the match three? Gravity Blast of, um, increasing Flintlock here. Damn, you just realized no one played Time Lord. It's a nice job, chat. Yeah, um, like, Dan, hopefully you've enjoyed watching the tournament too, by the way. It's great to see some of these uh, different decks. They're absolutely shiny here. That Flintlock's going to be hard to beat here. Um, let's see what Storm does. And we've got the Dogman being um, potentially discarded. So we've got the Dogman going. Okay, Dogman's going to activate its effect. Reducing Flintlock back to 1800. Defensive card, so street um in a strong position in this battle. You like the counter magicians like Arcanite and um, Assault Mode. They are they are very good cards. We've got the um, British Space Fighter now. Flintlock at thirty two hundred attack. Space this is game. Uh, this is Street taking us to one all in the series. So we've got a match three in this normal card final. What an exciting finals! All of a sudden, uh, Storm looked like so good in this uh, tournament is in this. Very, very fascinating result, but Storm gets to go first or second in this match. Street still in the event. Right, so we'll get started. But uh, yeah, um, like I said, no cap. Um, Gang Dre is sort of Dark Magician Blue is the main decks you build. Have you built anything else in the thing? I'll let you know what I've built. I've built Crank Kids, Crusadia, Marine Sis, and a Dynamis so far. Um, still got a long way to go in terms of getting some other things done. I've been playing since day one though, so I'm really getting stuck in. Jade Knight, uh, starting from Street. Not the greatest of starts for Street, but another resource probably getting to the hand. See if the um, see if the Danger uh, Fluff will Infernoid deck. Gets the plays off. So Toy Vendor on the field already. Fluffle Bear being prominent in this tournament so far. We've got the R uh, Trooper Cabra into the uh, Toy Vendor. Trying to build a good fusion elemental hero deck. Heroes are pretty um pretty good at um, the moment in terms of um, just being competitive enough on the ladder. Very expensive deck though. Like I know a few people have got it. And it's taken them a long time to sort of build, but they have got there. Not a huge amount gained uh, there. Jade Knight. Um, we'll get another card. Do you want to know how to board lot people? Use Grey Keeper with Skill Drain and the Contender Spell that only allows people to switch some Grey Keeper only. I like it, uh, Stone of God. Like I love how people think. Like there's different thought patterns and going through people's minds, different strategies. And it's good to see these decks talked about, not like the Sword Souls and like the main sort of decks, like Tri Brigade and all that. Flintlock. What does Street have up his sleeve? And he's got the Gravity Blaster on the Flintlock.
And we've got the flint going on the chupacabra. And flintlock is um, doing very well here. Taking that out. Flint's going to activate. Flint's going to attach to the um, lock here. Storm Summit needs a response here. Like, is this deck failing him at the wrong time? Toy Vendor. Getting a Toy Vendor away. Drawing to the Infernoid. That's going to be sent away to the graveyard. Toy Vendor. Sort of um, going from the thing. Drawing into Fluffle Wings. Second Toy Vendor down. Fluffle Wings being sent away. We've got the Infer Infernoid. That being sent away too. How many Infernoids in that graveyard now, guys? We've got, um, I think, enough to sort of... Yeah, we do. We have enough to get a real powerhouse on the board. And the thing is, Flint can't be destroyed by battle here, too. So it's going to be hard to get around. We like to build old school decks like original Yu-Gi-Oh! decks. Never really like the Pendulum XC or Link all that much. Love the old school stuff, too. No cap. Um, I have recently acquired Starter Deck Pegasus and Starter Deck Joey in real life. Just, just some um, childhood memories. Just wanted to get them as part of my collection. So yeah, really love the old school stuff too, man. It's really fun. Yo, Caboose. Um, we'll give Caboose a huge shout out, guys. Great to see you here, uh, Caboose. Try Trimids for the Fusion event. Just to be funny. Had some fun. Love that deck as well. Um, have played it in Dual Links quite extensively. But if you guys are not following Caboose, Caboose plays a lot of Master Duel as well. Definitely check out their channel. So the Flint is going to be set up there. Gravity Blaster coming into play. And Flint has been um, bl uh, destroyed there. And Storm O Summit now gets control of this game. So it's a very um, good finals match. Match number three. But you always build those old school decks, guys. We're going to have some old school tournaments um, happening um, sometime soon. Roulette Barrel on the field now. So going for a bit of a gamble. So the Roulette Barrel is sixes selected. At end phase. Unfortunately, didn't get the roll that was needed. Do you think Storm of Summit will have something um, here? Um, to take this tournament out. Toy Vendor. Been so good at instrumental in this tournament. We've seen like two or three Toy Vendors per adult from uh, Stormer Summit. The Infernoid being sent to the graveyard off the Toy Vendor. Fluffle Bear on the field now. And we've got the big Piercer now on the field. Also with Great Keeper, as long as Necro Valley is on the field, you would go and discard your opponent's hand. That's how good Grey Keepers still are, Stoner um, God. Um, they've still got the plays, you know, to sort of get some things out. And cause some di real difficulty for some of the newer decks. But yeah, um, Caboose, um, overall, um, how's your um, how's your master still training? What sort of decks have you got now, man? got danger dog man now and this is looking very ominous danger mothman now activating from the hand and mothman is going to send away the infernoid mothman and um, we'll get another resource battle phase now this is very much looking like S stormo summit is gonna win this tournament What a brilliant deck that was. Danger Infernoid Fluffle for normal card challenge. Street, you played really well to get to the finals, my friend. 2-1. Did pretty well, um...